What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is week four of season seven of the GBA. The San Francisco Giantes are team building for the San Diego Chim Chargers, coached by Lord Envy himself. Now, uh, I'm sure you all know Lord Envy. Envy is a good friend of mine. I like Envy a lot. We chat uh, offline about Pokemon stuff on the side, so I'm really excited. This is going to be my first battle against him, actually. So. Really excited to uh, to see what he's got. He performed very well last year, made it far in the playoffs, and uh, he's got okay. Analysts would have you believe this man's team is a D plus team. That was what it was rated. I can tell you, after team building for a couple of hours against this team, that is absolutely not true. This team is so much more powerful than a D plus team. Uh, at the very least, against my team, if that's the case. But uh, I'm pretty sure this team has just amazing... It's got amazing Volt Turn capabilities. It's got really powerful, hard-to-deal-with uh, threats. It's got lots of um, bulky offense options. Its support uh, mon are great. And it's a pseudo-rain team. And that allow that affords him a certain freedom in his own designs. Like sometimes you just won't match up speed tier well against other people. And you're like, alright, rain with swift swimmer. He's got two great swift swimmers. The only weakness of his team that I'm really that I really noticed and that my team building is sort of trying to capitalize on is a significant weakness to bolt beam with dark and ground coverage. If you have those four types, you super effectively hit every single member of his team with the exception of Kingdra. Literally, every single Pokemon on his team. So let's go over his team. Magnezone, weak to ground. Uh, Landorus, weak to ice. Dragonite, weak to ice. Alakazam, weak to dark. Uh, Empoleon, weak to ground. Meloetta, weak to dark. Uh, Muck, weak to ground. Uh, Pelipper, weak to electric. Kingdra, obviously not weak to those things, just fairy and dragon. Uh, and then you've got uh, Virizion, weak to ice. And you've got Kabutops, weak to both ground and electric. So lots of, uh, lots of options there. And I primarily built my team around that because another element of his team, and this is true mostly for free draft format, which is partially why I hate it, is anything's a potential bring, really. Uh, I've tried to tier it in a way that I think, if you look uh, above my head here, I've tried to tier it in a way that I think suggests likelihood. Um, so uh, Magnezone is a must bring. Uh, and Steel electric types do well against me. Electric types do well against me. Uh, the one big thing this week is you might notice that Aerodactyl is gone. I have replaced Aerodactyl, uh, and you can see on my team, which is over there. Wait, can I? <laughs> I can't do it that way. Um, you can see that uh, at the bottom where Aerodactyl used to be, I now have a Rhyperior. And uh, I'm not going to make an individual video about that because I don't necessarily think that we need it. I think anyone who's assessed my team from an early point of the season knows that I had an issue with electric, and it's one that I didn't think I had mid to late draft, and so I wasn't really looking to patch it up, but it became an apparent problem when I realized how many powerful electrics I play this season, uh, which is unusual in past seasons you know you face an electric type every now and then uh, you know a jolteon here and there but in the free draft everyone got one in the other format there's not very many in high tiers and the ones that are in high tiers are typically weaker than other pokemon in that tier you know you're looking at say thunderous t very powerful electric type however a lot of weaknesses that make it almost not really worth the cost if it's in a, a tiered format so it, you know maybe it gets picked up maybe it doesn't 
but so many of the other electric types don't typically go. A lot of teams didn't have electric types. Or, or if they did, they were picking up things like, in the past I've picked up, uh, Manectric, non-mega, and, you know, 105 special attack, 105 speed, you know, it's not that fast, and it's not that hard hitting, so, it's, it's interesting, because this season so far, every single match I've played against, uh, one with devastatingly high power, so, <laughs> it's been a problem for my team, I recognized that, I picked up something to help me with that, and that's, uh, Rhyperior, who can run defensive sets, tank sets, bulky offense, can run devastatingly high power wall breaker sets, um, very high attack stat, very high defense stat, can run solid rock, um, just, I, I think it's gonna be a good fit to the team. I don't lose an additional stealth rocker, so I still have that. I lose a defogger, but let's be honest, Aerodactyl was never gonna be a defogger. Uh, the one thing I do lose is my highest speed tier, 130, which I really did like. I really did like that speed tier, but unfortunately, uh, we're gonna have to settle with having 115 as my, as my top speed tier now. Uh, which is okay. It's not the end of the world, I'm okay with it. Uh, so let's go on to, uh, the team builder, shall we, and see what we're bringing this week. This week, we are bringing Mr. Finance the Rhyperior, Zong the Bronzong, Genghis Gar the Gengar, Dumbledore the Kinkelder, Moana the Tapu Fini, and Klisk X the Heliolisk. So, let's talk Mr. Finance. Uh, Mr. Finance is running Earthquake, Rock Blast, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, with the Solid Rock ability, and an Expert Belt. As I mentioned before... I only need four things to super effectively hit his entire team. The reason I'm bringing Rock Blast over Dark is because there's a tendency of Alakazams in this format to run uh, Focus Sash. And uh, you can't break it with Stealth Rocks uh, if he's running Magic Guard. So I want to be able to kill him. Uh, with one move, and Rock Blast can do that uh, more than 50% of the time, depending on his set, uh, with either a 3 or 4 or 5 hit, um, depending on the set. So I can kill Alakazam with this. Uh, Earthquake does very well against a majority of his team. It's Stab, it's very high power. Ice Punch and Thunder Punch is the super effective coverage I need to hit almost everything else. So Rock Blast is also a very safe click in some other scenarios where I'm like, I'm not sure if he's going to switch or not. I want to get some guaranteed damage or guaranteed it can miss, of course. But uh, So I this is the set I'm, I'm opting to go with this week, running max attack, uh, decent amount of HP. The, the numbers don't look great. These are all level 100, but if I drop this to 50, you'll see that it's... Good numbers, uh, a little bit extra into special defense, uh, and as low a speed as I can possibly get, Brave Nature Zero IVs, and that's because Bronzong is Trick Room this week, guys. Uh, we're running a Trick Room team. I have almost never done Trick Room before. Uh, gonna be honest with you guys, uh, I've certainly never laddered with Trick Room. I've never laddered with a Trick Room team. I don't think I've ever VG, I've never VGC'd with it. Um, and in general, I'm excited to try it. I am. I'm excited to try it, and I think it can. I think it can work really well against his team. And the main reason for that is Mr. Finance. When I ran my calcs with this set and and this coverage options, I one hit KO eight of his eleven Pokemon, <laughs> eight of them. And the ones that I don't necessarily one hit KO do not one hit KO me back necessarily. I mean, there are some options, one of which is a fully physically defensive Meloetta uh, with like a Calm Mindset, for example, that has Energy Ball. But come on, Calm Mind Energy Ball Meloetta is, I mean, if he brings that, that is a Lord play, but I'm really, I'm not anticipating that. Another is a fully defensive Landorus will survive an Ice Punch, fully defensive after he gets the Intimidate on me. So I'll need to scout for that relatively early. A uh, couple ways I can do that is just looking at... Landers is a very likely lead option, so I can play around that. Looking for how much... If he goes for an attack first turn, if he goes for Stealth Rocks first turn. 
we're looking for move switch ups scarf is also uh, it's very effective against my team from a chip perspective so there's a high likelihood he brings scarf just to try and get as many hits on me as possible however uh, I kind of want him to be Scarfed, if I'm being perfectly honest, because it means that some of my other Mon who otherwise could not have handled him can. Outside of the Trick Room, that is. Uh, for example, Moana. I'll jump ahead to Moana and talk about Moana here a little bit. Max Defense, HP, Surf, Moonblast, Nature's Madness, and Haze. This is so that I have someone that can switch into uh, Dragonite, someone who can switch into uh, Dragon Dance. Kingdra, someone who can switch into... I mean, he can switch into Kingdra, any set of Kingdra. Um, and someone who can switch into... Uh, Landorus, because... A max offense Landorus with... Um, Life Orb, Choice Band, Ground Plate, stuff like that, is pretty difficult for my team to handle. This is also a really good switch into the Kabutops. Um, it doesn't get O-Code by the... Verizion, though I probably wouldn't stay in because Moonblast isn't going to be a kill either, but it it affords me some switching opportunities there to potentially take out another Mon or severely weaken it. Nature's Madness will be great against a bulky Landorus. Uh, of course, Ice Beam would have been very good, however, Moana doesn't have a lot of offensive investment, and there are some circumstances where even a super effective Ice Beam against someone would have been better off with a Nature's Madness. So I, I opted to go for the Nature's Madness. It reduces my need to predict in a lot of scenarios. It means that I can take on Empoleon. It means that I can stop uh, Meloetta from uh, using me as setup bait. And on top of that, I brought Haze just in case. So you can't set up on this Moana. I don't really care about Defog, because if you look at my team, uh, I don't really have any weaknesses to it. So I'm not too concerned about that. Let's go back to Bronzong here. Bronzong is running Mental Herb, Earthquake, Explosion, Stealth, Rock, and Trick Room. Um, the goal here is assess who my lead matchup is. Click Trick Room. Uh, or click Stealth Rocks first if I, if I see an opportunity. Uh, click Trick Room next, and then just explode. Just get out of there. Uh, I want as many turns as possible in the Trick Room. The Earthquake is there in a unique lead scenario. Um, it would it can allow me to defeat some sets of Magnezone and some sets of um, Empoleon and some sets of Muck. And Muck is... I see a potential lead opportunity for him once he sees my team uh, because it does match up pretty well against a decent number. It doesn't really threaten too many of them uh, with the exception of Gengar. But I still I see it as a good lead option. It learns Taunt and so I have EV'd this guy. I know it looks weird because I'm Trick Room with some speed investment but that is to make sure that I outspeed um, 8, 12, 16 investment, uh, speed investment muck. So, first turn, if I predict he's gonna go for, if he goes for a knockoff, he's not gonna hurt me. Uh, I'm too defensive, and unless he's like a choice band set, he's really not gonna do too much to me. So, first turn, I can click Stealth Rock. If he taunts me, I will outspeed and the mental herb will kick in. Second turn, I can click Trick Room, outspeeding the muck. And then the turn after that, I can just boom or I can switch out if I feel safe about it. If he taunts first turn and I click Stealth Rock, I can still click Trick Room. Whether it's knockoff or taunt, both very likely potential options that he could click. I'm going to get two moves off against him with this set unless his speed is... Uh, higher than mine. In which case, if he clicks knock off, he removes my mental herb, but I get one of my moves off. Uh, no harm, no foul. Uh, if he clicks taunt, then the mental herb will eat it, and I'll still get off the stealth rock, and I'll, I'll have to set up an opportunity to trick room later. That's if he has speed investment on his muck. I don't see him doing that because uh, the muck speed does not put him within range of any of my other Pokemon on my team, except Dumbledore. I don't really see him specking to outspeed Dumbledore with his uh, with his Alolan Muck. So 
Let's keep moving here. Genghis Gar is a backup trick rumor here. So I have a slow trick rumor who can take some benefit from his trick room, and I have a desperation trick rumor who can put up another one uh, by outspeeding things, potentially threatening some things out. That said, Gengar has a really difficult time switching in, and I only really have one Volt Turn option here. Uh, that's Volt Switch on Klisk X. So, spoilers, Klisk X has Volt Switch on him. So, uh, I'm running Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, Icy Wind, and Trick Room. Of course, the Bolt Beam option uh, is great coverage for a lot of things. Shadow Ball is my best option for Stab, um, because there are too many things on his team that resist poison, or are completely immune to it. Um, Life Orb, just high damage. Uh, there's not too much trickery in this set. The speed investment allows me to outspeed um, max speed Virizion. And uh, that's all I need there. Mr. Dumbledore himself, of course, a relatively standard set here. Drain Punch, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, and Earthquake. I was considering Knock Off in place of Drain Punch there. However, I wanted the ability to get some health back. I'm running Guts with Flame Orb this week to maximize his damage output. Dumbledore is uh, just like Mr. Finance, however, a more stable, safe choice. Uh, because Mr. Finance, unfortunately, a lot of the members of his team, being a pseudo rain team, have four times super effective moves against him and can one hit KO him. Dumbledore is, that's not the case. There aren't very many things on his team that can do that. Uh, Alakazam, Meloetta. Uh, that might be it. Um, I think I'll, I'd have to look at some of my calculations, which I don't have open right now. I'm not going to waste your time doing that. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he, he. Those are the only two things that can Oko him. The things that can do a lot of damage, but he has great freedom in his move pool options here. He can do a massive amount of damage to lots of things. Uh, and like Mr. Finance, very difficult to wall. These are both 140 base power Pokemon here, guys. They can wreck some shop against his team. Uh, so moving on, we have Moana, which I spoke about a little bit earlier. And then Klisk X. Klisk X is here, uh, again, because of the diversity and coverage options needed. I wanted some high speed Pokemon uh, to afford me some opportunities outside of Trick Room. Choice Scarf with this investment uh, means that I will outspeed a Scarfed Virizion. It, it gives me an option for Scarfed uh, Landorus outside. Uh, mainly this is for for Scarfed Landorus. It's a Scarfed Landorus option. It's Dry Skin, which is great in a rain scenario. This is actually very good in a rain team in general. Uh, very fast. Uh, outspeeding... I believe it outspeeds... I'd have to, again, check my calculations, but I believe it outspeeds uh, Adamant Rain Kabutops. Uh, Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, just stab power and stab momentum. Dark Pulse and Hidden Power Ice. So we got the Bolt Beam. Don't have the ground coverage, but we do have the Dark Pulse there. So, um... Just gives me some speed options. I really wanted them for the team, and I think it can... Provide a decent amount of help for the for the majority of his team. So, what do you guys think about the team this week? Uh, never tried Trick Room before. Don't know whether or not he'll expect it. Um, but I guess if you see now, nah, because I've brought Bronzong a lot, I've brought Gengar a lot. They don't necessarily scream Trick Room, but I gotta play aggressive this week, guys. This is a mentality I'm bringing into my game. Um, I need to be playing aggressive against him because. His team has a lot of high power. If I start making all these defensive switches around him, giving him the opportunity to predict me, uh, I'm in trouble because he has a lot of momentum grabbers. He has a lot of very high power Pokemon. I do too, but he has them in probably a better, if I'm being honest, a better uh, type matchup. And he's got a lot of fail safes that, uh, that I do not uh, this week. He, his Alakazam, you know, Alakazam is great because he's almost a guaranteed kill. He's very hard to get chip hits on him and then kill him. He's got high power. He's got incredibly high speed. A lot of the times, if he's a two-hit KO on someone, he'll get that two-hit KO because of the, the guaranteed that his Focus Sash stays, stays woke. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's got uh, Empoleon, which is a great support Pokemon. Uh, works very well on his team. Meloetta, who's freaking annoying. I gotta be honest, I, I, I hate Meloetta. <laughs> um, and guys, oh my God, I'll be so happy if I get to do this in the middle of the in the middle of the the game. Look above me, guys. Look above me. Oh, ah! I don't know what's doing at the bottom there, but that'd be so. Cool. Mellow and a P, that switch up, that switch up, I don't think he'll do it, it's not particularly good against my team, I don't really have issues uh, with with fighting types on this draft, so, anyway, so, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, looking forward to battling you, Envy, I will see you tomorrow, buddy, as always, my name's Jim Leader Geo, you guys are the challengers, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you guys next time.